and welcome to this entirely sober special edition of oh, fuck, fuck, stop. Hello and welcome to this entirely sober special international conference on men's issues 2020 edition of Gender Matters with your hosts, me, Elizabeth Hobson, Atta Chris. Oh. Don't worry about it, it's fine. I'm just... on the list, so Don't I, worry I, about that. I thought um... I was going to tell them who I am. Yeah, well, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, what? I think we should just carry on. Yeah, okay. So, Fuck it, it's fine. And our super oh, okay. special Scott Ash guest, Count Dankula. He's a Bonjour. man who rose to infamy through teaching his girlfriend's dog to do unspeakable evil against a vulnerable community, which I fully condemned with the highest degree of seriosity. He was dragged <laughs> through a show trial as a result and came out the other side only more dedicated to the free speech ideal. So, Dank, how do we find you? You can find me on uh, YouTube at Count Dankula. You can find me on Twitter at CountDankula.tv. You can, no, sorry, just Count Dankula TV. And you can also find me at OnlyFans.com forward slash Big Daddy Bulge 420. <laughs> <laughs> and may I ask, how has Scotland gotten so retarded? It's, uh, the, uh, there is a reason for it. Everyone, uh, everyone is always like, "Why are the why are the Scottish people is like so pro SNP? Why why is like our whole th- thank thanks Tories like it's our version of like thanks Obama? If any if anything goes well in Scotland, it's because of left wing stuff. If anything goes wrong, it's because of right wing stuff, and it's all purely because Thatcher. It goes back to Thatcher. Everyone in Scotland hates Margaret Thatcher, yeah. hates the yeah. Tories. Yeah. And just that entire sentiment has just been passed down the gender. You know, Scottish children are raised to, uh, you know, say please and thank you, don't hit girls, fuck the Tories. Like, that's the, that's the way Scottish <laughs> children are raised. So basically, see anything that's right wing, that's why the majority of Scottish people go, oh, it's right wing, it's bad. It's bad then. It's, re- it's very bad. And that's why that's why so many of them are like this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm um, I'm from Liverpool, so I get the exact same thing. There was a hashtag after the last general election that was hashtag Scouse not British, and they were going on about how you know all the the red wall had betrayed their working class brethren and all this kind of stuff. Fucking hell, really? Yeah, and like, let's be honest. The working classes voted for the Tories because they knew that they were the most likely party to deliver Brexit, and Brexit was a working class revolt. It was, it absolutely was, and that that was that was the reason why. I mean, like, Labour lost Scotland completely in the EU election. Labour, Scottish Labour, didn't get a single seat. Wow! I never. Yeah, and that, that's the thing is, I had one one guy who was a Labour guy in Scotland, and he, he saw me in Glasgow as I was walking past, and he peered went like. That. All right, thank you. How many how many seats did you keep get? And I turned around and said the same amount as Labour. Uh, and it, the it guy, even, even even though the guy was trying to be a dick, the guy looked at me like, oh, "All right, all right, fair." Well, <laughs> like fair enough. But that's how it was. Labour somehow lost Scotland. They somehow probably apart from like the north of England, it's the most like working class part of these islands, and Labour lost it. Like that that's that's just how deep down the rabbit hole Labour went and everything. And like, you know, but people always said to me, Why don't I join Labour for a laugh? But I've spent four years trying to convince people that I'm not an anti Semite. Ah, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I don't want to undo all my hard work, you know. Well, that's the funny thing I was thinking about earlier. Because Scotland's always been very Labour, and I think see since the independence referendum, um, because even though they didn't get it. If you're voting in different areas, there's four parties or something to vote for anyway. So it's the SNP get in, not because they're more popular, but because in those areas, out of the four, people are more likely to proportionately vote SNP, even though half the country doesn't want them. I, th- I think it's the, the reason for it is, see 90% of SNP voters, what they actually know about the SNP and the SNP's policies, they could write on the back of a postage stamp. Now a lot you get a lot of Scottish people that are nationalists, like they do want Scotland to be an independent country, but they seem to have bought li- like the SNP's lies. Like, ah, yes, we are all about 
Scotland for Scottish people and everything. Now, here is our Justice Secretary, Hamza Youssef, uh, to, t- to tell you, to tell you uh, why you're going to get seven years in jail for posting an offensive meme with this new hate crime bill that they're trying to get, and that's the sentences they want to give out. You'll almost get the same... See if you've got... See if you just possess offensive memes on your computer, you will get almost the same maximum sentence as a person who gets caught with child porn on their computer. I like, really- that's that's the law that they're trying to pass through. So everyone looks at that stuff and they go, well, if the SNP is trying to do that, why the hell do people keep voting for the SNP? And it's purely because they don't know... They don't know about that shit. They don't know about like the fact that the salmon, the salmon inquiry is being an absolute shit show for the get go. Where Nicholas Sturgeon is like, I don't remember that meeting. I don't remember saying that. Saying it. <laughs> it's like, and it's just they're just the sketchiest people. And see, there, there are two types of people in Scotland: SNP voters and people that haven't met me yet. <laughs> <laughs> And because I swear to God, every every one of them, apart from one, and it's purely because I respect him, and it, because he owns the magic shop that I go to, and I don't want to start any problems with him, right? But every, every what is it settlers you go to? Don't docks where I play magic. <laughs> but yeah, I I, I respect I respect that guy, and he's a great guy. Which is why anytime he's like, "Oh yeah, SMP, SMP," I'm I'm sitting there with my cards, just biting my lip, like mm-hmm. he deleted me That's off Facebook. Just he, del- yeah. he deleted me off Facebook because I didn't vote for independence. <laughs> oh for God's <laughs> sake! I know, I realised that. <laughs> Even I was like, I was posting pictures of Braveheart, like, "Come on, Scotland! I don't want to pay your kids fucking." university tuition anymore I'm, pr- I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that that's what uh, William Wallace and Robert the Bruce had in mind but it's like we don't want to be ruled by the English bastards <laughs> we want we want to be ruled by the Belgian bastards <laughs> by the German bastards <laughs> by the French bastards we want we want to take complete control of our own country so that we can hand it over to someone else and be in the exact situation that we've been complaining about for a few hundred years. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what they had in mind when they were laying their lives down, yeah. Uh, it's, and that's the thing I don't get. Well, so I, I, The funniest thing to do to them is if you go, so do you support Scottish independence? Yes, 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 I do. Do you think we should be in the EU? Yes, yes, I do. So you don't support Scottish independence? Then. <laughs> <laughs> that, do, do that to them, they hate that. Because it's it's like it's like typing divide by zero into a calculator. They can't function. <laughs> like they, they don't they don't understand it when you ask them that. It's funny as fuck. So one thing I just want to say, sorry, see, you mentioned Hamza Yusuf. I remember something you said recently about why are all the leaders? How come this leader is white? This person is white. If you look it up, Scotland is ninety six percent white. So proportionally, I know. Why? Sh- I mean, proportionally, I'm sure there's more people that aren't white than are white in these places as far as the proportion of the Scottish, you know, demographic is. But you know, that doesn't fit the narrative, does it? No, but especially the fact the fact is as well is you know, if a country is 96 percent white, then I would imagine the overwhelming majority of the top jobs of that country to be made up of white people. <laughs> Hamza Yusuf seems to have an extreme problem with what I would consider to be completely fucking normal, right? I'll, I'll, I'll admit, like, see, see, for example, like, South Africa, where whites were a minority, but they were in charge of everything, then you would, back back during apartheid days, that's when I, that's when I would say, right, hold on a little minute here, something's a bit fucky here, right? Yeah, yeah that's that's fair. I mean, if, if today whites still dominated all the top positions of South Africa, I would raise an eyebrow and be like, Nah, hold, hold on, hold a second, right? But the fact is, it's now normal. The way the way Scotland is right now is normal. But he complained about it, and he didn't just complain about it in a normal way. He was going like that. The lead chancellor, white. The, the chief of police, <laughs> white. white. <laughs> and it was... It was such disgust, too. <laughs> it was, I swear to God, it, it, it looked like Hitler talking about the Jews. <laughs> That's what it looked like. And it was like Hitler going like... It was like Half the people in the cabinet, their names end in Stein. <laughs> so I say, for fuck's sake. And that man, like, he's one to watch. I swear to God, he, 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 has, he has absolutely one to watch. 
He's uh, whenever he tweets now, uh, he set it to only people that follow him can reply because he's because he's sick of me. And, all, and, <laughs> really? and uh, it is because it is because of me. Um, there's a, there's a lot of people in the Scottish government that actually like me. It's this whole there's a, there's a term for this, but I, I forget what it is. But it's basically there are big time celebrities and big time politicians, like big big people in Hollywood, even the 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 regular people. They go home at night and they watch YouTube and they browse on Twitter and everything. It turns out a lot of celebrities have alt accounts so they can act like a normal person on Twitter and you know say the n word and stuff. Um, <laughs> But uh, and they all like people like us, and they all watch us. Like you'd be, you'd be surprised the people that watch us on YouTube, like big time people, and on their main Twitter accounts, they're like, "Oh yes, diversity and uh, feminism and, uh, and all this stuff," because they need to say shit like that because otherwise they'll lose their job. But then sometimes, whenever they get drunk, they'll DM us on their big famous celebrity account and go, "I really, really like you. I really appreciate what you do, and I like Sargon, and I like this and that." But please don't tell anybody that I spoke to you because I'll get kicked out of Hollywood. I'll lose all my movie contracts <laughs> and all this stuff. And it's the same with people in the Scottish government as well. You'd be surprised how many people actually like us, but everyone's too afraid to say anything about it because if they do, they'll lose their job. Well, that's what Philip Davies has said to me in the past. He said that, you know, there is cross-party support for his stance on equality for men and boys, but they're all just shit scared of, like, the media shitstorm that will follow if they say anything that's not totally feminist. Yeah. You know, anything that can be construed as having a little bit of compassion for men and boys is going to cause all hell to break loose. I think I think it's it's a paper tiger. uh, It is, yeah. Yeah. Like that's like that's this is the thing that I do now. I'll I'll admit I've got whenever I got cancelled, I get through into a well. Whenever I get sorry, whenever I got cancelled the first time, uh, (laughs) I I went through like complete shitstorm. Like lost my jobs, lost this. I was out of work for like eight months I wasn't making any money and stuff like that and it was a shit situation to be in but then it taught me to be more self-reliant taught me like a sort of level of entrepreneurship like I focused on YouTube and now I've got I've got investments and shit I've got staff working for me and all that type of stuff so I'm lucky that I was in that position but see when you build yourself up from that where you're not reliant on any of these people that are threatening you you don't have a livelihood that they can call up and go do you know that you employ in that say and like feel like take it away from you so like that's i think philip davies and other mps are in a position where if someone goes oh i can't believe that you said this anti-feminist thing just do what i do and go yeah what are you going to do about it yeah, I'll, I'll I'll write an article about you. Yeah, put it in the pile. So I, oh, everyone's going to think you're an arsehole. Oh, they do it anyway. See, so I, another so in other words, nothing is going to change by me saying this. So I should just say it anyway. Well, <laughs> so. you know, I think that average Jane and Joe are pretty based when it comes yeah. to like free speech issues and when it comes to issues of like equality between men and women. People, people just aren't confident to talk about it because yeah. they, they want to avoid an argument. Right. Like, but, you know, I mean, yeah. if you look at um, the 2017 general election with Philip Davies and Sophie Walker with the Women's Equality Party went to unseat him and, she, you know, they poured money and resources into that campaign and they had the backing of the entire mainstream media and the entire mainstream media was going, Philip Davies is a misogynist and he wants women to suffer. And he, you know, he doesn't care if women get beaten and raped and all this stuff. And he, he I'm, I'm pr- yeah, a pr- solid majority and yeah. you know, WEP lost their deposit. Like this, this, this is the thing that I am noticing among the average, average Jane and Joe out there is there's a lot more people that whenever they see something on the news, they just look a lot of shit. Yeah. So they just that that famous 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 phrase, which is brilliant. And I want more people to be saying this whenever they switch on the TV. They'll just see something and that the TV is basically going, This is who you should like. This is the way you should act. This is the party you should vote for. And everyone at home now is just going, lot of shit. And changing the channel. And I think that's fantastic because, like you said there. <laughs> The entire mainstream media was behind whoever the fuck was like they were trying to like unseat Philip Davies, and they still lost. They yeah. still lost. Big like, time. Big yeah. Time. So the the average person at home 
is buying like people are buying less and less into this shit. Like, I people, yeah. people people are starting to like completely mistrust the media, which is a great thing because the purpose of media is propaganda. Right, media like governments and people in power use the media to influence things and get people to think the way they want them to think. Yeah. I don't like the media, right? And that's why so many people are now turning against it. I'm, everyone's getting so like blackpilled about all this shit, man. I'm noticing more and more shit every day. I'm getting more excited for the future. Well, yeah. See, see, for me, thinking about your situation, you've kind of made the absolute best of it. Was amazing, but. If you think about people like Chelsea Russell or whatever like that, other people that these sort of things happen to and they're not really able to do the kind of things you did. And it's even simple people like myself, see some of the people I talk to and some things I say, I I might lose my job just because it could be someone notices something. I know that people are waking up more to it, but I hope soon people wake up more to it and also talk about how fucking shift it is because that's part of the the issue if people are waking up they don't say anything you know it could keep happening you know yeah i mean, it- admit like the the intolerance and the you know the anti-free speech and the anti-equality kind of feminist prejudice and all of that and all the radical left stuff seems to be so baked into our institutions that i'm not convinced i i certainly have hope and that's why I do what I do that we can turn it around but I'm not convinced do you have any predictions Dankula? I have predictions that what happened in America where critical race theory got banned I think it's going to happen over here soon mm. I think it's going to happen over here soon but it's basically now one thing that I absolutely 100% agree with if a private company wants to do that shit, then whatever it can do it. <clears throat> I feel that government institutions or government-funded institutions should be completely unbiased when it comes to politics. There shouldn't be... I don't want I don't want left or right being favoured. I want them both... Well, left or right being favoured. I want them both being treated on an equal playing field. And see when the far left are trying their best to skew the playing field in their favour... That's just them admitting that their ideas can't stand on their own merits. Yeah, it's like basically, it's, it's like trying to say, yeah, I'll totally fight you in a boxing match as long as I have a gun. <laughs> like, it's like, that's, that's what they're trying to do. It's, it, they're just admitting, that's admitting you can't fight. That's admitting your ideas don't work. Right. Mm-hmm. So see from the get-go, before they even step into the ring, we know that they're full of shit. We know that they don't know what they're doing. We know that their ideas don't work. And more and more people are starting to realize that as well. I mean, this this is the thing is you ever you ever heard the phrase like these people all the way they own all the media, they own all the news and all the big all the comedians on primetime TV are all left wing, all left this, all left that, and ever the equality, diversity, feminism, but all the buzzwords in the world. And they keep spewing it out and they keep spewing it out constantly. You can't turn the te- telly on. You can't go to a work meeting without hearing about it. And after all of that, it's still not working. People are seeing right through it. And it goes back to that old phrase, if they were winning and their propaganda wouldn't be necessary. Mm. I like that. I like that phrase. And that's the thing yeah. is, like, see, they're, try- they're trying so fucking hard and they're still failing. So that's why... I'm not blackpilled. I'm hopeful for the future. In the future, 10 years from now, I'm going to have my own privately owned aircraft carrier populated by femboys and cat girls, and everyone's going to be armed with recreational RPGs. <laughs> right? That's, that's, what, that's, that's what the future holds. You'll be uh, amazed when it was paid for with Bitcoin as well, open carry. <laughs> so, so, yeah, open, open carry. I'm going to open carry Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so... I um, had a little look at some Scottish government kind of statements. Yeah. I read the following. In response to concerns surrounding the upsurge in harassment and harassing behaviours, the Scottish government has proposed a new standalone criminal offence of misogynistic harassment. Yes. Obviously, we're considering the same in England. Have you got any thoughts on that? Yes, and I can tell you exactly what happened with it. Because whenever the government wants to pass some legislation, they always first make sure to get feedback from the Scottish people. So what they do is they hold a seminar 
for people to come and like view, like listen to the law and everybody gets given their feedback and they advertise these things publicly. Now, advertising something publicly, you know, there's a wide spectrum there. I mean, there's two ends of the spectrum. One of them could be the seminars plastered on the front page of every newspaper. Or it's on every prime time news slot. It's on all of that. But then it could also be a little postage stamp on the very back page announcing it. Now, even oh, if you've got, rib. yeah, if, if you, even if you've got that little tiny postage yeah. stamp or just a single little paragraph hidden somewhere on your website, technically you still publicly advertise the seminar. But what they did uh, with the hot Scottish hate crime bill that this is all included under the standalone offence of misogyny um, is they advertised it publicly. They didn't. It was buried deep, deep, deep within the website. They only technically advertised it publicly and then specifically invited people from left wing feminists, like all those types of groups, basically people they knew would agree with it. They all came into the room, heard it with a little and they all put on their little commissar hats saying yes yes yeah yes comrade the fucking soviet soviet national anthem blaring in the background everyone's drinking vodka and pissing through the gulag fence like and and that what happened was the scott the people that want this legislation passed then go back to the government and say well we held a seminar and we got very very from the scottish people uh, that they want this legislation when all they really did was they made sure to fill the entire room with left-wing people that they specifically invited so that they could lie and say the Scottish people support this. And that's what they did with that misogyny bill. That's what they did with the hate crime bill. And the reason we know that they did that is because we had a man on the inside. Um, it was tailed feature. <laughs> he went, he actually went to yeah. it. Yeah, he went to it. And uh, everyone was trying to talk to him and they were talking about the, the patriarchy and the, the white man, the the way the like ancient aliens, like who built this great wall of China? But could it be the white man? <laughs> like fucking like shit like that. But he he's not a confrontational person in person, right? So you just sort of sat there smiling and nodding, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, fuck men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because, because he was really worried that he would get made and get kicked out. <laughs> Yes, right. So uh, we've seen all that stuff, and that's why when Hamza Yusuf came out, and this was now the funny thing is with the misogyny bill, it was basically any gender. So misandry was in it as well. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But then the feminist groups who were invited were very unhappy about that because if misandry was included in the bill, then they wouldn't be allowed to do anything. <laughs> that's that's, that's the, thing. Yeah, yeah. That's the, I'll lose, but I'll lose my job. <laughs> Right, but basically, and so they said they kicked off about it, and so what happened was misandry was removed, and now it's only misogyny, which means we now have a law that enforces inequality. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to treat men a certain way, but it's illegal to treat women in the exact same way. So the party of the SNP that preaches about equality and understanding literally just are passing a law that enforces Forces inequality. This law enforces and propagates inequality, and the SNP have just done that. I demand my god driven right to call, call a woman a cunt. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, exactly. some, sometimes women need to be called cunts. Sometimes they need checked. Sometimes they get a little bit, right, and, and you just need to call them a cunt. Something I don't understand about the misogyny thing is, what is misogyny under the law? I mean, have they actually... Well. Well, this is, you know, the other thing, because we had from the EU years ago, didn't we? They were trying to categorise criticism as, of feminism as misogyny. And Laura Bates's fantastic new book, Men Who Hate Women, or indeed Men Who Hate Feminism, I it for her, <laughs> um, she advocates for criticism of feminism you know, the, everyone who criticizes fem feminism, the manosphere, as she calls us, to be categorized as domestic terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not funny, though. It's not funny. I'm not no, a domestic terrorist. I don't want to be categorized as that. As I'm, whole, I'm, I'm not surprised. These people, obviously, these people think that words coming out of a person's mouth that challenges their worldview worldview is terrorism of course they think that of course they do 
Well, you know, words are violence. Our words are violence. Their violence is words. Yes, obviously, yeah. I, I remember that time. In fact, I made a joke about that once where... Uh, you know what words are in fact violence. I remember this one time I was in a bar fight and I slit a man's throat with an adjective. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking honestly, like that, that that's the thing, is that's remember how I said they're trying to like you know tilt the game in their favor. That's what they're trying to do. You're not allowed to criticize anything that I am saying. That that translates into I am propagating the ideas. They could be very easily picked apart. So we are going to do the exact same thing that the Catholic Church tried to do for centuries. Mm. Like, that's what they're doing, basically. Oh, did you disagree with the Bible? You know, but tied around the stake, hold this can of gasoline, smell for the camera, right? That, that's what they're trying to do. Burn, burning people at the stake for criticizing the holy book, right? And that, all that is, is an admittance that it's, it, it's, a, it's worse than just propagating bad ideas. It's the fact that they know they're propagating bad ideas. It's not even just a case of they've been misinformed or they've not done enough research. They know their ideas are bad, but they're trying to force them through anyway. And that's probably one of the most egocentric, egotistical and malevolent things that I've ever heard of, where you know you're wrong, but your pride just will not let you admit it to the point where you're willing to send people to jail like you would rather some random people that you don't know for criticizing you over you just admitting that you're wrong. Is that what you think it is? It's about pride. Uh, it's pride. I think you might be right. Like, you know, it's, it's their abs- sense of identity. Pride. Like people wrap their sense of identity around these left wing politics and, you know, feminism and stuff like that. And they throw themselves into it and they kind of when that's threatened when that identity is threatened by better ideas it's like Uh, proper like wonder woman you've got to get rid of that you know what i mean yeah so i'll admit in in the past i believed in bad ideas like i I, I used to be a communist aggressive left leftist feminist Uh, like that that's that's the thing is there's there's absolutely Absolutely no shame in changing your mind and evolving based on new information. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's absolutely like, see for example, see for example, if I say like Dave, Dave, Dave that stays a few doors down, oh he's good, he's a good guy. But then someone comes up to me and says, yeah, but D- Dave went to prison for six years for having child porn. That's when I that's when I would go. Okay, my opinion of Dave has changed completely, right? That's that's a completely normal thing to do. But what these people do is, when you tell them Dave's a pedophile, they'll turn around and go, "No, he's not. No, he's not. Dave's Dave's cool. Dave's fine. Dave's nice." And it's kind of, and it's like that's what they're doing. It's just it is pride. That's what it comes down to. These people are they they care more about their own ego and their own like the way people perceive them over actual facts and the way that people can live their life like I, like I just want people to, I want people to live their life in any way they want as long as they are not infringing on the rights of others I think that is an extremely reasonable thing to ask you can sleep with sleep, you know sleep whatever gender you want you dye your hair whatever color call, call yourself whatever funny gender that you want or whatever you absolutely can do that but when you start trying to pass laws saying that i need to take part in your little fantasy that that is when i've got a problem yeah. but then but then if I, t- I turn around and say what about my freedom these people respond with what about my feelings yeah <laughs> Do you know what's funny? Um, and it comes back to your Nazi punk video originally. Now, um, you know, you and I grew up probably about 10 minutes away from each other. So we knew a lot of the same people. And everyone was sharing this on Facebook. Well, I mean, it was shared all over the world anyway. And everyone was saying, this guy's an absolute legend. This guy's brilliant. See, as soon as there started being people saying, oh, this guy's horrible, this guy's that, no one would say, oh, he's cool anymore. Oh, that's horrible what he did. And it's like you don't actually think that. It's more than just scared of what people will say. If you know, you say Count Danko is funny. And I've seen that with so many friends and stuff like that. They were all for you when that first came out. And now it's like I've seen stuff like, oh, this piece of shit. And there was also, there was a guy that, there was some people at your wedding and he said, they were you guys had your, like all your feet together and he said, oh, they're making a swastika out of their feet. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I, I basically... What? We, we had a we had a 
we had our scheme that for anybody that doesn't know, right? And at Scottish weddings, we that and obviously when you're wearing Scottish traditional dress involving a kilt, in in your sock you have tucked a skin do, which is a which is a ceremonial knife that you wear, right? So we all had our skin do's or ceremonial knives tucked into your socks. It's standard cultural dress in Scotland, right? I've even I've got my skin do sitting up there, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stand up. Because uh, I'm I'm in my boxer shorts <laughs> right now, um, but uh, basically we had it all tucked into our socks. We all we all put our, you know lift, lifted the kilt a little bit, show, showing a little bit of thigh, you know, like the sluts we are, and just like took a picture of all our feet together with our skin dudes. And then people were like, they're trying to make a swastika with their legs, and I, and I, I, part of me I thought it was a paw. I thought it was someone like taking the piss, right, just like making a joke. I thought it was someone they had tried to mimic a Guardian headline or something, but no, this guy was being serious. Yep. And that man is like, they're trying to make a swastika with their feet. Jesus. <laughs> Just, and these, there are people, that this man's breathing the same air as me. Mm. <laughs> and that man, just, I hope he doesn't operate any heavy machinery or is involved in any type of career that could result in, you know, the loss of human life. Yeah. You know, I hope, I hope he's just like stacking shelves in Asda somewhere or something like that. He's just, honestly... The, the stretches and reaches that these people will make mm. as well. I just, oh, if I, <laughs> another, another, another famous <laughs> expression. Yeah, if you, ideas, you know. Sorry. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? I just said the contradictory ideas. They come thick and fast. Oh, know, yeah. That um, men and women are, in, are entirely the same and any unequal outcomes are the result of oppression of women, you know, if they don't favour women. And yet, men and women can be born with the wrong brain in the wrong body. And, you know, you, you might be a man with a woman's brain. It's like, well, you know, one of those can be true, but they can't both be true. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, like, this, this is the thing as well. Is like, well, one of the contradictions that I absolutely love is they love using the LGBT. LGBT, they love using using that acronym. And then, but these are the same people that say, oh, there's, there's so many genders. I mean, even though the B in LGBT suggests that there's only two genders. Oh. Like, like, so like, that's, so like that's, that's the thing is, and they're still holding that up there. So like, even, even like the logo, the name that they stand behind is a contradiction. Right? <laughs> so like, that's that, honestly, like I'm not, this, this is the thing is you, you get, the sensible left and the sensible right. You've seen the political compass, and most of them, most of them all occupy this little bit right in the middle. You know, these people are only a little bit left or a little bit right. The people in the middle here, they'll have their disagreements, but most of all, like they get along, right? Yeah. And then you get the extremes of either side who are fucking mental and they just ruin it for fucking everybody else. Yeah. yeah. And you know what's funny with that LGBT thing? Now, I put out some kind of, well, it was kind of bait, but I was actually wondering what the answer would be. I said, um, what's the difference between bisexual and pansexual? If you're bisexual, does that mean you think there's only two genders? And, like, I, I kept pu pushing this to people that I, that I knew would kind of get baited by this, and they got into massive arguments over why, you know, oh, no, some people aren't attracted to people who are omnigender and all that stuff. How would you know if somebody's not even omnigender anyway? Are you suddenly saying, right, I, I, somebody out in the pub, I'm attracted to them, I got them going well, one day they tell me I'm omnigender or something, oh, I'm not attracted to you anymore because I'm yeah. not for that gender, it doesn't make any sense, you know? <laughs> like, that, that's the thing, is like... <sighs> I don't, I don't understand it as well. Like, usually, usually, whenever I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting a female, I'll say something like, "I like your face and I like your boobies. <laughs> those are, those are very nice. Those are very. Would you like to go out sometime? See if they say something like, "Oh, I'm actually um, demi queer. Uh, or was it flu fluid queer? Uh, some, sometimes I identify as the Pacific Ocean." I know that, right? It's it's kind of I, how how would you know that? How would you know? But there's some people that def define themselves as like wolf kin and wolf gender and like all this type of stuff, and it's sort of like my my preferred pronouns are this is what you must refer to me as, and everything. I don't like that. No, no. This is the thing is I've I've got I've got I've got transsexual friends who have gone through the HRT. They grow their hair out and like they they see the transsexual friends that I have that are like sensible they don't buy into all the nonsense women. they want to be women and you call them her and she 
yeah like that that's that's the thing is that like that see when you look at them like you're like that that's a woman yeah that, that's that's a woman right and they, and they ones like they just want to get on with shit like the, these 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 the my trans friends like they don't go to pride they don't go to any lgbt stuff and all because they hate it they just want to get on with shit but like they get so much shit from like people well they go like you're not a real trans person because you speak to count dankula and he 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 wants violence against trans people and i'm like uh, wait what when when <laughs> when did i ever advocate for that and never, it's just i but they the thing is like they get a lot of shit and it's the no, the no true scotsman fallacy no true trans person would be right wing and all that and like I've, I've seen them as well where whenever they get called out on it they turn around and say oh well guess i'm a man now then i guess that even though they, even though they're fully a woman they're like oh well get, must be a man now Oh well, all those years of HRT and operations. Now nope, I'm a man because of my because of my political beliefs. It's just this fucking nonsense, man. Yeah, it does my well, head. I mean, then. you know, I've noticed this beautiful thing actually happening with um, the gay community, who had started to disappoint me. You know, because they were kind of, I thought they'd lost their subversive edge. But in recent years, you've had like National Union of Students kind of associations deciding to no longer hold seats for gay men because they're not really oppressed anymore and i'm like is it or is it because they're quite likely to be conservative these days like gay men are getting bloody face yes yeah yes they are yeah like that's that that's, that's the thing is i don't it's, it's weird how certain fights have been adopted by particular sides. Like, people turn around and say, like, oh, LGBT is 100% a left-wing issue. They're saying, oh, it's a left-wing issue. Now, you get people like a lot of tankies, a lot of, like, Stalinist communists who literally, they use the same terms as the alt-right, where they say degeneracy and stuff like that. They say anime is degenerate, homosexuality is degenerate, and all that stuff. And, like, a lot of them actually want to buy like the LGBT thing isn't like a left wing thing. Like, see, for example, right wing libertarianism, you, you can have whatever fucking sexuality you want. That is your right to have that. Yeah, that that, that is a right wing issue. That, like, I think we may be losing connection here. The lines, no, uh, the, I think the internet right. speeds fucking up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I, I just wanted to say like two things. The first thing was that, you know, I would say that LGBT whatever you know the alphabet people i would say that is a left-wing ideology because you know the kind of gay friends i have who they they don't subscribe to it they don't consider themselves to be lgbt you know they consider themselves to be you know a, a human individual and yeah they yeah. sleep with men it's not a major part of their own mm -hmm. identity yeah you know? when, when i when i said when i said that i didn't mean like the LGBT banner, the LGBT movement. I meant like literal demographic, lesbian, gay, bisexual people. That's that's what I, yeah that I, that's that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm aware that it's date night for you, and I don't. Yes, yes, it is. Your time. <laughs> so I want to thank <laughs> no, you very much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks so much. We're really good off you, man. It was it's good to catch up with you again too. I know, good catching up with you. Well, if, are you down in London or something? Some shit? Yeah, yeah. Get up. Are you? You're breaking up, sorry. Get back, get back up here. I I know, get, yeah. get back up here. Get back to where you belong. I know. <laughs> I can't I'm never leaving London now. Yeah, we've got some <laughs> Oh, God, I don't know. Okay, right, I'm coming back, man. <laughs> right, well, anyways, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump off because I think about to die or something like that but yeah, it, was it, good. it was good coming on i'll talk to you later right yeah. thanks a lot man thanks cheers very much. right bye-bye no worries Bye. see you later